the leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialist. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialist today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you, so make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way! Welcome to the place! Welcome to the place! 
Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. We got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose, U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call 800-471-3287. U.S. Tax Shield. boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. 800-471-3287. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. You are listening live to the Vito and Vito Show. Disrespectful to the executive branch. I would remind you that extremism... In the defense of liberty, is no vice. Don't sign the damn deal, and the president won't... Therefore, I do not believe that the majority can vote a man's life or property or freedom away from him. And we're live here on the Vito and Vito Show. I'm Vito. And I'm Vito. We want to welcome everybody to the Vito and Vito Show. Check out the website, www.vitoandvito.com. Give us a follow at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at Vito and Vito Show. And allow my co-host, ladies and gentlemen, to explain what you're listening to right here on the airwaves. We are bringing you <laughs> the perspectives of two college-age millennial conservative libertarians out of liberal hellhole, Brooklyn, New York. We're, def- we're defending the principles of free markets, liberty, and individualism. We hold no punches here on the show. We go through that line every week. Yet you always find a way to fumble it. Well, you know what? You type up the teleprompter pretty wrong. You should go take an English class. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. I took the same lessons that Barack got his lessons from. Oh, that's saying a lot. Yeah, so. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we got a show for you, ladies and gentlemen. What a show indeed, Vito. What are we talking about? 1,237. Those are the delegates you need, but the RNC rules, that's what we're going to talk about. We're talking about the RNC rules tonight. Vito and I got into a bit of a debate, a bit of a scuffle over this. Vito believes, I'll let him speak for himself a little later on in the program, but we're going to talk about if a candidate should get 1,237 uh, in order to... Uh, to to clinch the nomination for the Republican Party. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll talk about Wisconsin after Ted Cruz's big victory. Let's go, Ted Cruz. Yes. All golf, right. Golf clap. Yes, golf clap. Golf clap. Golf clap. Golf clap. I think I got something here in the graphics for a little... Sure. little. Oh, here we go. Very good. Yeah, a little round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, if you know. And also, mm-hmm. um, there's a socialist club. It's called Meet the Socialists at my school, Broken College. Ah, the oh, renowned wow. college as the home of Reverend Al and uh-huh. Bernie Sanders and... All those great socialists. Yep. So we tweeted that picture out. Make sure you see that picture before we start talking. You don't know what the hell we're talking about. At Vito and Vito Show on our mm-hmm. Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to be talking about that socialist. That's going to be a little, little later on. Later on, later on in the program is going to be fun. Uh, Vito, you have socialists at Brooklyn College. Who would have thought? Yeah, of course. This yeah. is, again, the home of Reverend Al Sharpton, the home of... Uh, the socialist he didn't, he didn't... Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Sanders. He only, Bernie stayed there for a year, then transferred to the University of Chicago. Um, when he mastered his art of socialism. When he mastered the art of socialism. And public deception. Yeah. <laughs> when he took Saul Alinsky 101. Uh, <laughs> we, we, and we also have in that uh, um, in that school Barbara Boxer, senator from California. Ain't she wonderful, Vito? She's my favorite senator, of She's course. She's my favorite senator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a, a wide collection of socialists. Uh, so I love it right now. Vito, what's the call-in number? 718-705-4469. Very good. I think that's the number. If you call it and you get an Asian, like a Chinese restaurant or something, or a pizzeria. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wrong vetoes if, if, if you dial in over a pizzeria. Yeah. Uh, I just want to let everyone know, if you're listening to replays of broadcasts on different networks, like um, WNJC, WNJC, Philadelphia. Yes, uh, K98, Red State Talk Radio. 
Uh, all these other stations, if you're not listening to the live broadcast of the Vito and Vito Show, Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time at www.vitoandvito.com by click, clicking the Listen Live link, you cannot call in. So please be aware, if you're not listening live, you cannot call in, you can only listen. Uh, but I'm sure some of the calls that are going to be calling in have the same ideas that you might have, or the same questions well, nonetheless. If you call in after the show is over... You might get a voicemail. I don't know if we still have the voicemail yet. Either way, maybe one of us will answer, or yeah. it might really be the pizzeria. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> so. It's a direct line to our pizzeria, Vito and Vito. All right, so uh, let, let's talk about this, Vito. Um, should you get 1237? Break it down, because I know that this really sparked a good controversy, and Trump is arguing you don't need 12. You shouldn't need 1237 for the convention. It should be the person with the most delegates, Cruz on the other hand, and his camp are saying, no, you should get the required number of delegates that the RNC talked about earlier in the year. Vito, break it down. Well, that that directly affects Trump and Cruz, because if Trump, if you get the highest number, then Trump wins because he's in the lead. But Cruz, right. you know, if Cruz says that you have to get the threshold and you don't go to a broken convention, that directly helps Ted Cruz. Mm. But looking at it from an outside standpoint, because I am neither Donald nor Ted. Or John Kasich. I don't know if he's still in there. That poor guy. <laughs> that poor guy. He's just looking for love. He keeps coming in fourth. I think I that John Kasich... This is what I think. John Kasich was deprived of love as a child. And he ultimately had to... Uh, now he's trying to make up for it. You know, he's supplementing his energy by running for president and hoping people like him. But even here, he fails. Yeah, because he eats pizza with a fork. Oh, I know. We've seen that. We're going to break that down also here on the Vito and Vito <laughs> Show. break down his... His uh, fork. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, tell, tell me about it. But nonetheless, uh, well, let's let's talk about this right now. So, so this is where the argument shapes up. Vito put out a Facebook post, uh, and it caused a lot of controversy. He said, "I like to do that." Well, well, how about you just read the quote? Can you read the quote for us? You want me to pull up my Facebook and read it? Yeah. So as you pull it up, I'll just give some background on this, and I'll make you read it directly. Um, Vito Di Giovanni. I just want to make this very clear. Vito Palmieri supports the notion that you need twelve thirty-seven. But nonetheless, one of the Vitos here, if you're confused. Wrote a Facebook post that basically said, "You do that. The candidate with the most delegates should win the nomination. They shouldn't need twelve thirty-seven, right? Uh, yeah, yes. You have it. Uh, you yes, pulled yes, it up. Yes. I right, so pull it up. So I posted yesterday, eleven fifty-two a.m. I didn't ask for the specifics, guy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, you want an alibi? Go ahead. Come on. I said, idea. Whoever has the most delegates should win the nomination. There should be no twelve thirty-seven threshold. Also." Anyone who is not running for president or has already suspended their campaign should not be allowed to win the nomination at a brokered convention. The RNC rules say that you must win enough delegates in eight states to make the ballot at a brokered convention. Mm -hmm. If anyone wins the nomination who is not Donald Trump or Ted Cruz, I will leave the Republican Party, for they are then corrupt and do not represent me no more. Well, there are parts of that Facebook post that I actually agree with. Uh, I think we all are pretty much agreeing with the notion that if it's not Trump or it's not Cruz, uh, it, it's absolutely ridiculous mm -hmm. for anybody to jump on the race and say they want the right. nomination. I heard stories that Paul Ryan might get drafted. Right. People even spoke about Mitt Romney. I heard John Boehner. Oh, even better. If any of that happens, I am out. Gone. Okay, you cannot have the party city because right. I think it was Rule Forty Two in the RNC, the the convention rules that all rules are temporary, which means they can change up Rule Forty that says you need eight states to make the ballot. Right. Technically, Rule Forty B says you have to at least have won eight mm -hmm. states, or a majority of delegates in at least eight states. They changed that a couple yeah. of years ago because of Ron Paul. In order to qualify, right. In order to qualify at the convention to become president. In order to qualify for the nomination. Now, so so as currently, the rules pretty much say that John Kasich and anybody else who wants to jump in, considering Kasich, even though he's running, don't know where he's running to, <laughs> but even though he's running and he hasn't won at least a majority of delegates in at least eight states, he cannot become president of the United States. He cannot even get the nomination, or he couldn't get the nomination of the Republican Party, should I say. Unless they change the rules. Now, that is always an option. The GOP establishment can change the rules. I know Newt Gingrich was on Sean Hannity's show earlier in the week after the Wisconsin victory, and he basically said, look, I don't see where this is going. It's going to be either Trump or Cruz if the Republican Party happens to pull any stops out. And they put in somebody like a Paul Ryan or, or a Mitt Romney or some other loser, they're going to fall into a trap that's going to destroy the party. Gingrich was laughing it off saying it's no big deal, please. The RNC isn't that stupid. But this is the same RNC, ladies and gentlemen, 
you know, that that backs up losers and backs up Rhino establishment candidates uh, like John Boehner and Paul Ryan and stuff like that. This is the same RNC uh, that is seeking to reach out to millions of different voters by sacrificing core Republican principles. I mean, I mean, we have to make that one thing very clear. So when we're talking about this issue, I want it to be understood that there is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing that could stop the GOP establishment if they want to put in a Mitt Romney or a John Boehner or a Paul Ryan or anybody. I, 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 they can. The question is, for the sake of the Republican Party, if they do that, they are destroying the party. Now, the part that I disagree with, and I think everyone agrees with me, that with the exception of Mitt Romney, uh, you know, other people. I think Rens Re- Priebus, um said he doesn't expect there to be, he doesn't expect the nomination to go to anyone but Ted or Donald. So he says it's either Trump or Cruz. He says he doesn't expect it to change. Now, it can change. I mean, we're talking about a deceitful Republican Party here who right. lies to drop the hat. You know, uh, and and it, this is the Republican establishment. They want to keep their people in power. They don't like Donald. They don't like Ted. So I I, I don't see them not following through on their word. But if you don't, not for nothing. I I, I want to, I want to talk about the difference between us. You say that a candidate doesn't need shouldn't have to reach twelve thirty seven to right. get the nomination. Right. And I just want to make one thing very clear. It's not an arbitrary number. It's not completely drawn up. No, I know that one thousand two hundred thirty seven delegate count is 50% of the delegates in the Republican Party plus one. So it gives them a majority of people within the Republican Party. The majority of delegates within the Republican Party. Where am I wrong? No, that's right. That's a fact. That's math. Great. That's simple math. So you could do... I could do math. You could do math. John Kasich can't do math, ladies and gentlemen. He needs about 120% of the remaining delegates <laughs> to clinch the nominee. 122%. Please, Vito, tell me how this common core governor out in Ohio who expanded Medicaid in his home state, welcomed Obamacare with open arms. Please explain to me how this reformer, as he calls himself, cannot do simple math. Because he took common court classes. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I wrong, Vito? Why shouldn't a candidate get twelve thirty seven? I think if you don't okay, if you don't get the twelve thirty seven right now, if you don't get the threshold it goes to a broken convention. Right. So if you vote for Donald Trump in New York and he wins those delegates, when he goes to a broken convention, those delegates can vote for anybody they want. They can vote for Cruz or Trump. So all these guys who voted for Trump who want Trump, Mm -hmm. who happen to be a lot of delegates, a lot of votes went towards Trump because he's a front runner. Essentially, all those delegates, the second time around voting for the broken convention, can now turn around and all vote for Cruz. Now, how is that fair? And how does that more represent the people and the, the Republicans in the Republican Party. Well, I think it represents that because effectively what you're thinking about is that the delegates are effectively like it's like it's like, it's like um, the Electoral College. So it, that's pretty much the the idea behind the concept. So when we're talking about people in the Republican Party that make up the delegate list, those people that are delegates. Vote for the nominee effectively, the same way like electors vote for president. So the people are not necessarily voting for the candidate per se; they're voting for a delegate to go and help them, and and, and to rather to vote for that candidate. The rules are pretty clear in the beginning of the entire primary process when you had over twelve million Republicans running on that ticket. The rules were clear: you needed one thousand two hundred and thirty-seven delegates. This number is stuck in my head. I remember this number more than I remember my own damn birthday. <laughs> you need 1,237. Those are the rules prior to the, 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 the entire process to begin with. To change the rules now is ridiculous. I'm not saying change And I know you're not arguing that, but I just want to make this clear for future references. That it, it doesn't make any sense to sit at 1237. Or rather, to do away with 1237. Because, like I said, the, the majority of the Republican Party, the delegates in those Republican Party, they're voting for the candidate. Under the same rationale why electors vote for the President of the United States. So, the only reason why you have this is because instead of the people just putting in anybody they want under a popular vote, that wouldn't be fair. That wouldn't be fair... To a lot of minorities, a lot of smaller states, a lot of bigger states, 
it would be an unfair balance of power. So what you have is a lot of these candidates going, the Republican Party going about the delegate system, and the delegates choose the nominee. Now explain to me, Vito, if I don't reach 1237, let's assume for a moment that, let's take the scenario to an extreme. Mm -hmm. I've been called an extreme guy. Let's take this scenario to an extreme. Let's say that there is one candidate who receives 70 delegates. And there are 1,200 other delegates who receive two delegates apiece. Obviously, there is no support behind the guy with, at least no broad support behind the guy with 70 delegates. So, so the point that I'm trying to make is you could have all these people running, all these different scenarios. The point is to get at least 50 Fifty percent plus one of the delegates that make up the Republican no, Party to vote for that candidate. There's sixty-eight more delegate support for that one candidate, and if it goes to a broken convention under these rules, all those delegates can now vote for whoever they want to, and they can go rally against one guy who got one delegate, and he'll be the nominee. I don't. I don't think that represents the people. The people want. A certain candidate more than another one. So if Donald Trump has more votes but doesn't get the 1237, then how is that fair or representative of the people if the delegates can go vote for whoever they want? Because who appoints the delegates? Well, because, well, well let's wait a second so now. The because have no say in this. Well, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, the people that are voting for that candidate who are, who are giving their, their vote to a specific candidate per se to have a delegate. Go at the convention and vote for that candidate. Yeah, they're doing so on the first vote. You could say that. It's fine. But you're also electing delegates who are people to freely vote themselves. Those delegates are free to choose who they want. And now you're saying that's not fair to the, the American people at large. But I disagree. I think it's probably one of the more fairer systems. Because like the Electoral College, so that we do not have bigger states with bigger populations drowning out smaller states and smaller closely aligned candidates. It's not fair. And and honestly, and, and, and hold on, wait a second, and, and what are you running for? Are you just running to get popular appeal? Are you just running to become the figurehead of the party? Or are you running for the Republican Party nomination? I hate the Republican Party a lot. Not too much to leave it, but it's getting to that point that it's very close. The point that I'm trying to make is that you're trying to get at least half of the party's support. Half of the and party the, support the people, not the party. Because the people, the the, people if, that make up if the if party. If not enough people vote for you and go to a broken convention, right? Then you have to have all these delegates who are appointed by who? Where do you get these delegates from? State legislatures, and there's so many different ways in which right. all different states do it. But okay, right? But not the people. Mm -hmm. So then all these delegates can go and vote for whoever they want. Which, Again, which essentially, then, if this is the what the party has in power, wouldn't this allow then, if they change the rule, that they can just draft Mitt Romney and all these delegates who are appointed by the party, and these legislators and the establishment, they can go put in whoever they want. And if you're so worried about disproportion among the states, like I get with the electoral college, but this is a party process, not the United States uh, general election. If you're so worried about disproportion with the popular vote, how about you have the delegates, so New York is 95, and West Virginia is how many, how many, and it's all proportional, but you still have whoever has the most votes wins it. So you have the, you know, instead of going to a broker convention, that's when the delegates, that's really my biggest problem, is that the delegates now can vote for whoever they want, even though that could probably help Ted Cruz. I'm talking in theory. I'm talking about the rules, not who it's going to help or who it's going to hurt. I'm talking about the future. Or what I think, at least. So you have all these delegates. And now they can vote for whoever they want. So you, you, you didn't appoint, you didn't vote for these delegates, you didn't elect these delegates. Who becomes delegates? Who? What, you gotta be friendly with the establishment and these Republican officials in, in your state? How many public officials... Both Republican and Democrat in New York have gone to prison or being investigated. So how do you... So then, hold on, These hold on. These people are picking the delegates. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I see where you're coming from, but now answer me this. What happens if you go to a convention where there's... Because this is really the whole point of a delegate to begin with. What happens if you get to the convention and there's a tie? How do you break the tie? What do you have? One, like, final wild card election round? How do you break a tie if there's no delegates? If there's a popular vote? 
But there would be no plausible way to do that without cheating somebody out of a system. So the delegates are per se there to break the tie, or at least get over the majority, uh, the majority in the Republican Party. I said you you have the delegates. Uh, you make sure that it's not even, so you don't have a tie because you get one right twelve thirty seven. Yeah, but you want to do away with twelve thirty seven. But you said you don't want one. You just wanted someone whoever's have the majority of delegates gets the nomination. So who has the most? But you still have the delegates with the right. with, with each state, which is proportional. So if you win New York, you win all these states, you get those those delegates. That's it. So you want to have de- see? I don't know where you're going with this. Do you want to have delegates and a popular vote? Because that's just so confusing. What's the point of having two? Because then you find yourself in the same situation you were before. How so? Well, that's the point of the delegate system. Again, if there is a hypothetical tie for the nomination, the delegates are there to choose the nominee. On the second ballot, delegates can go and vote for a specific candidate. How do you break a tiebreaker? It's it's almost impossible. All right. If you just let you just take your example of a popular vote, just popular vote amongst people, no delegates. Get rid of the delegates. Just a popular vote. And don't get me wrong, the delegate system is flawed. Sure, all systems are flawed. But pretty much, the delegate system is in place to represent the Republican Party. Go about your popular vote perspective. How do you break a tie? How? How in any way, shape, or form? If one guy gets one more popular vote than the next guy, how does that show me anything about the Republican Party? What are you bringing together? Because the nomination process is a collection of people agreeing to a candidate on the basis that when you vote for a candidate, you're at the same time voting for a delegate, and you're then voting for that delegate because you voted for that candidate to pers- persuade that delegate to vote for the candidate that you, you effectively voted for. There is no way at 1237... It's not an arbitrary number. That's how we started the, this point off. It's not arbitrary. It's meant for something. That 1237 number is important. Right, but the real problem is the broker convention. Well, then the thing is, how do you deal with the broker convention? And I think the, the, the best way to have a fair brokered convention is to set the rules up. Because you could change the rules right up to the convention, to the day of the convention. The rules committee can meet and change the rules tomorrow. So what should you do? You should have the rules set prior to when the primary season even begins. Prior to Iowa. Set the rules way before. And if you're able to set the rules way back... In November, in September of 2015, for example, we wouldn't be in this this whole, oh, what would the rules committee do in 2016 in July? It would already be taken care of. There would be clarity for everybody. But there is some type of clarity right now. You need 1237. You need 50% plus 1% of the delegates in order to take 51% and have a majority in the Republican Party. We're going to break. When we return to the Veto and Veto Show, we're going to talk about college campuses, Wisconsin, and some phone calls. We're going to return right here to the Veto and... Beat our show. Who might you save? Your mother, your father, your husband, uncle, aunt, son. Learn fast. F-A-S-T. The sudden signs of a stroke and you could save. Your friend, teacher, boss. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. F-A-S-T. That's F, face drooping, A, arm weakness, S, speech difficulty, T, time to call 911. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in the recovery of your neighbor, the waiter, grandmother, grandfather. So learn F-A-S-T, the sudden signs of a stroke, then pass it on because you never know who might save you. Your wife, your colleague. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. Feedthepig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to mooch off your friends. You gonna finish that grape? You mean the one in my mouth? You don't need to stop buying the necessities. What you're smelling is a natural musk. Ew. 
You don't need to be a medical test subject. How do you feel? Mostly okay. I... <laughs> Sometimes, though. <laughs> you don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman! Let's break for lunch. You just need an internet connection. Don't get left behind. Start your personal savings plan with the tips and tools on feedthepig.org. That way, you don't need to sell your soul to the devil. Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. All right, deal. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs, the California Society of CPAs, and the Ad Council. Fighting the Common Core Standards? Need a powerful tool to help inform others on this harmful education initiative? You're covered with Common Ground on Common Core, the collection of essays by 20 top education experts and activists. Reviewers call it the best single resource on the topic. You can share it with literally anyone. Order your print or digital copy of Common Ground on Common Core today. Just visit resoundingbooks.org. That's resoundingbooks.org. And get $2 off when you tell them Vito and Vito sent you. Paid for by Resounding Books Pack. It's important to plan ahead for emergencies, like like the storm. storm. When When it kicked in, we had a plan. We We were able to get in touch with each other in no time. We had no idea how to find each other. The whole whole experience was was the most frightening 10 hours of my life. If there's there's one piece of advice advice I'd offer other moms moms out there, there, it's to stay calm and keep to the plan. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at readypa.org. Brought to you by Ready PA, FEMA, and the Ad Council. And we're back here on the Vito and Vito Show. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Vito and Vito Show. And, of course, our website www.vidoandvido.com Give us a call Talk to us 718-705-4469 Write that number down Because I'm getting tired of saying it That's right 718-705-4469 He's getting annoyed Saying it ladies and gentlemen Just for the record We're to make everything very clear We're to make everything Unlike the Republican Rules Committee Who's going to make up these rules The day of the convention To try to force in their Rhino establishment candidate I want to be very clear with everybody, if you're listening to the program, you can only call in at 7.30 p. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, you're it. really clear. I see numbers all over my screen. Sorry. You can only call into the Thursday night broadcast at 8 p.m. Eastern Time uh, at www.vito1vito.com. That's where you can hear the live broadcast Thursday at 8. If you're listening to a recorded broadcast of the program on a different network or on Spreaker, we encourage, or any other thing like iTunes, we encourage you to listen to the program and enjoy uh, all right, Vito, let's talk about this. So at Brooklyn College, break this down for us, home of Bernie Sanders, Al Sharpton, Barbara Boxer, et cetera, et cetera. It's a socialist haven. It's a socialist orgy yes. down in Brooklyn College. Explain to us um, what you saw in your classes. So they, they, they like to have these extracurricular activities, these clubs. Yeah, like basket involved. weaving right, and chalk cleaning do. and right. you know, racer beating and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know what you do in your school. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it kind of had to take care of a safe space, right? All that. <laughs> How to maintain your safe space? Yeah. And <laughs> so, um, in the cafeteria, my my friend sent me this picture. He happens to be one of the few conservatives, um, that I know at Brooklyn College. There was a club. There's a picture on Twitter they were talking about. You can see that at Vito and Vito Show. Mm-hmm. It's called Meet the Socialists. Oh boy. That's right, you can meet them, talk to them, give them your money, and then go leave and hey, be broke. You mean they're not going to rip it from you by force or something? No, 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 they're more like democratic socialists. What the hell they, does they, that mean? They have everybody agree that they're going to take away your, your rights <laughs> and money. So it's all the socialists coming by together. By force. And then take it by force. Okay, all right. So, they so give these, you a chance. They, these, they, these... they say, give it to us yeah. or we'll break your knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what is the club called? Meet the socialists. Meet the so like meet the Jetsons or, or meet the Jeffersons. That that's what it's like. Yeah, that's it was ridiculous. Right in the cafeteria, it's where I go. Uh, I eat. I hope know, so. That's what you do there. in the cafeteria. And you see the picture here. And these people signing up. There's books. Yeah. Probably the Communist Manifesto. Would it be oh, shocked? I see a, a sticker. I'm looking. I'm zooming in. And it says Trump, system that spawned him. Okay. Okay. All right. This is uh, this is interesting. Meet the socialist at Brooklyn College, ladies and gentlemen. This this is another example of socialist, the socialist take over America, starting at the university system again. How is Islam so popular? Like, why is radical Islam so popular? Because of the idea of radical Islam. As a result of the idea of radical Islam being spread by academics and by by the 
by the intellectuals. It spreads down to the common man when he picks up a gun to blow up an American citizen or to blow up people in Paris or to blow people in Brussels because of the ideas in his head. The same thing with the United States. The only way, how does the Cuban revolution happen? How does Castro get as many people to join him? He gets it through the ideas that communism is a great thing, and then he forces people, he, he doesn't force them, but well, well, he does force them, but he persuades a large amount of people to join the revolution, to fight with him, to overthrow the government. Same thing in the Soviet Union. So ideas, the United States, perfect example. How did the American Revolution come about? By ideas. So ideas are powerful. Ideas are the trendsetter here. The ideas that are being put in college students' head by meet the socialists, and that's okay if you're a socialist. You're wrong, but that's okay. I'm willing to have the conversation with you. But you better know what you're talking about. I bet you a lot of these kids who will meet the socials probably, A, never read the Communist Manifesto, B, probably never read Capital by Marx, which is a fallacy written book up and down the story. If you ask them the economic calculation problem by Ludwig von Mises, right? Huh? Right, exactly. <laughs> that's the response you're going to get. If you ask mm-hmm. a socialist in college... Please explain to me the transformation problem in Marxism. How do you change... How, how do we get prices from... Val- and I can go into this all day, but how do we How do we derive... La- if labor is a source of all value, this is what the Marxists say, if labor is a source of all value, mm-hmm. how do we convert that into prices? How do, we, how do we know what to make? How do we know what is efficient? How do we transform labor into an actual com- like, um, uh, price? How, how do we set it into motion? It's called the transformation problem. Marxists have no idea what they're talking about. No. That problem, actually, by the way, there is no answer for it. Marx couldn't have answered it. He gives you an elaborate theory, but it falls apart. Uh, and there's tons of Marxist scholars out there who tried an, an attempt to prove the economic uh, transformation problem in Marxian economics. No way to do it. Mm-hmm. No way to do it. So uh, these, these people probably have no clue. Then you just look at the empirical facts that, all, if you get the theoretical stuff, the empirical stuff, look at the Soviet Union, uh, you know, look at uh, Cuba, Look at Venezuela. Need I go any further? Come you know, on, if you're listening to the show, you know. The healthcare in Cuba is amazing. The education yeah, system who? in Norway is amazing. Yeah, it's great. They level. They, they want to be more like Europe. They want to be more like them. Where I see terrorist attacks happening every day. Mm. Where economies are collapsing. The yeah. EU is failing. So if you like it so much, go there. Yeah, okay. This. You like things, you go to it. Right? Does that make sense? This is it. We got a caller here on the Vito and Vito show. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome to the Vito and Vito Show. How can I help you? Hi, I'd like to talk about some uh, stuff uh, on these college campuses. You want to talk about stuff on college campuses? What's going on? What's your name? My name is Ben. I'm sorry? Ben. Ben? Yes, Ben. All right, Ben, you're breaking up on me a little bit, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to hear you right now. Uh, what, what's going on on college campuses? Try to get to a better area. You're breaking up. Uh, what I want to know is how come they have all these you know, socialist clubs and, and, and they're not? And, and I don't see any clubs for Americans or, or Republicans or you know, something like that. It's very confusing to me. Uh, do, they, do they not allow them or what, what's the problem? The conservatives, the you know, Nazi, all these, it, it's very confusing to me. Yeah, well, Ben, I, I, let me break it down for you. A lot of these kids don't understand the meaning of, first of all, hard work. A lot of these kids don't understand, for example, the meaning of of what it means to answer a lot of these questions when it comes down to what is capitalism, the moral standing of capitalism. First of all, they never even introduced to any other theories aside from Marxism. So they hear the same old crap every day. They're told that the rich are evil. Like this Meet the Socialist Club at Brooklyn College where Vito goes. They're told that socialism is the way to go. They're told these things are great. They're told this is what you have to do if you want to be a part of the cool kids. They're told if you want to go ahead and get a good grade, you got to be a socialist. They're not told directly, but they're told indirectly. And Ben, let me just tell you on this too. If you look at it, a lot of the people, these college kids who, are, who, who just talk about socialism... All night and day, as if it's the greatest thing possible. Like, again, these Meet the Socialist kids at Brooklyn College, they don't know the first thing about socialism if you ask them. Ask them if they read the Communist Manifesto. They probably never read it. They probably never read the book. So explain to me, Ben. I don't know if you're a college student. I don't know if you got kids in college or whatever. You're going to have to explain to me why the college infrastructure is crumbling right now. Well, I'm not sure. First of all, I mean, the Communist Manifesto is only like, like 10 pages long, so if they haven't read it, there's this big problems, you know, with uh, their, their ideas. But I'm not really sure, you know, I, I go to college in New York, and I'm a conservative in New York, and it's very hard to, to even find an outlet to find other, you know, even Republicans, I know the conservatives are even, even more to the right, the Republicans, it's still even harder to find people just that aren't like that, and if they're, if, there's so little of them that there's not enough 
Thanks, Ben, for the call. You're breaking up, man. Wish you were in a better spot, but don't worry about it. We appreciate the call. Uh, I, I think, Vito, when you look at it, ben, Ben's got a good point. He's a college, I, you know, from what I made out, colleges are indoctrinating students. That's what they're doing. And this is not news, ladies and gentlemen. They've been doing this for years. And when you look at the answers as to why they're doing when you look at the, the reasons why they're doing this, they're doing it because they're pent up on the idea that ultimately socialism is the new way forward. But they don't understand the the own arguments that are against them. The real world is against them. If you look at the Soviet Union, you see mass starvation. Mm-hmm. You look at Cuba, you see people dying in death camps as a result of uh, uh, Fidel Castro. I'm tired of hearing this nonsense that ultimately Cuba is the greatest place on earth for health care because it's not. The locals, by the way, in Cuba, there is a black market. The National Review wrote an entire article on this, and they had an actual nurse that fled Cuba, fled the Cuban healthcare system for the United States healthcare system, came here for freedom and liberty, and she asked her a question: "What is healthcare like in Cuba?" You know what she said, Vito? Let the black market for which pill? Aspirin. aspirin. Expired aspirin, not legitimate aspirin. Aspirin that you can go to Walgreens, CVS, whatever pharmacy is around you, and purchase for a headache. What do you take aspirin for? What do you take aspirin for? Is it a headache? Pain. Right? And listen pain. To the show too pain. Much. Listen to the show too much. Whatever it is. Th- that's it. There is a, a black market, and those pills range for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. For expired aspirin. So we're, and, and, and I'm tired of hearing the nonsense, too, also, about infant mortality. Cuba has such a low infant mortality. I don't care about Cuba's infant mortality, mortality rate. First of all, the government skews the statistics. There's another article in National Review that, that outlines that and exposes that, right, number Just like one. in North Korea when they won the Olympics 20 years in a row. Right, exactly. Number two, if you look at the Cuban healthcare system on the whole, you have three types of systems. You have, first of all, a system for the, the foreigners, another system for the political elites, which are perfect, by the way. Of course they are. When Michael Moore went to go sh- uh, uh, shoot the film Sicko in Cuba to talk about how great the Cuban healthcare system is, they took him to, of course, the beautiful foreigner uh, healthcare Resort. places, <laughs> right, pretty much. Yeah, they do it all up just for the people yep. like him. Just John for... Stossel did something. He did an expose on that. And John Stossel, who I love, by the way, showed the deterioration of local healthcare facilities at the hands of the Cuban government because there's a lack of efficiency and a lack of resources. Take it to the next level, Vito. Take it to the next level. Did you know that in Cuba, you have to bring your own toilet paper? You have to bring your own... Gowns, your own clothes, your own shower stuff. I bring my own toilet paper everywhere. I'm glad you do that. But nonetheless, this is what you have to do in Cuba. Because there is a mismanagement of resources. The Cuban healthcare system is an absolute disaster. So if you're going to appeal to, if you want to be a socialist, be a socialist in in at least some type of logical way. And try (laughs) to, you know, at least if you can, that's an oxymoron. oxymoron. Yeah, but good luck trying to figure it out. These meet the socialists because they have no idea what they're talking about, and I would love to get one of them on the program just to go back and forth with them. Let's make that happen, Vito. Sure. Can we make that happen? Let's say hi. I completely despise your ideas and think you're trying to (laughs) try and take over the United States with Bernie Sanders. You want to come on my program? That's it. Just like that. You should ask those kids how much Bernie's program would cost. Oh, they don't know. And they're going to give me some BS argument. They're going to dance around the fact, but it's absolute nonsense. Well, if we raise everybody taxes by 100%, we should be able to pay for it in a couple of years. I spoke to a kid that supported Bernie today in uh, in, in my college, and, and he made the argument, uh, and, w- and he's a pretty passionate Bernie supporter, and he said, listen, here's the deal. Bernie Sanders, he said how he's going to pay. I said, how is Bernie going to pay for free college? He said he told everybody how he's going to pay. I said, all right, how did he say he was going to pay? He's going to tax Wall Street. And you're going to have to go a little bit further than just taxing Wall Street. That's a very blanket statement. Tell me more. How do you intend to tax Wall Street? What? Wall Street speculation? What else? When Medicare and Med- uh, Medicare first started on, uh, with LBJ, under the Great Society programs, Medicare was projected to cost the United States $1 billion per year. And we're talking 1963, 1960, you know, the 1960s. One billion dollars a year. In the first year of its implementation, it grew four times. 
The government cannot manage anything efficiently. To say they want to run college and, and all these other things, it's, it's, it's absolutely disastrous, you know. That's why we need a businessman in there that knows what he's doing. Well, here comes the quick <laughs> change from Trump, Ted Cruz Trump, to Trump. Donald Trump. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I kidding. would. I, listen, I'd rather have Trump than Bernie. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. At least you get the wall. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you saw this. I hope it's not to forget about it. I don't want to spoil it. About Bernie Sanders, do you have anything on there? No, Bernie, no. No, well, here's one. Here, here's a little taste. I forget about a moment of the week. Bernie Sanders says he's going to have the United States apologize. You ready for this, Vito? He wants to have the United States apologize for slavery. As president, he would apologize for slavery. Oh! <laughs> okay? Oh, as soon as every other country does, too. All right? As soon as every other country does is right. As soon as Africa, the entire continent, apologizes. You know Africans used to enslave fellow Africans? Right, and sell them off. Yeah. It, the slave trade was horrible. Look at me wrong. As a libertarian, I think it's terrible. Oh, I think as a human being. Sure. Yeah. But you can't say the United States started this. And, you know, we use slavery and bad Americans. America's always evil. It's such horse, you know. All right. So, I mean, I, I just wanted to get this out of the way. Do a little vent here. We like doing these little college exposés right here on the Vito and Vito Show. And to the Emory, Emory University students and the University of Tennessee students who, where, where kids are writing pro-Trump messages and chalk. I'm sure you all heard about this. Mm-hmm. They say that they feel violated. Take a walk, kid. Take a walk. Come walk the streets of Brooklyn. Let me see how tough you are. Go to your safe space there. Vito and Vito, when we return, we'll talk about Wisconsin and forget about it. Moments of the week right here on the Vito and Vito Show. Who might you save? Your mother, your father, your husband, uncle, aunt, son. Learn fast. F-A-S-T. The sudden signs of a stroke and you could save. Your friend, teacher, boss. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. F-A-S-T. That's F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in the recovery of... Your neighbor, the waiter, grandmother, grandfather. So learn F-A-S-T, the sudden signs of a stroke. Then pass it on, because you never know who might save you. Your wife, your colleague. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to mooch off your friends. You gonna finish that grape? You mean the one in my mouth? You don't need to stop buying the necessities. What you're smelling is a natural musk. Ew. You don't need to be a medical test subject. How do you feel? Mostly okay. I... (laughs) Sometimes, though. (laughs) You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman. Let's break for lunch. You just need an internet connection. Don't get left behind. Start your personal savings plan with the tips and tools on feedthepig.org. That way, you don't need to sell your soul to the devil. Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. All right, deal. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs, the California Society of CPAs, and the Ad Council. Fighting the Common Core Standards? Need a powerful tool to help inform others on this harmful education initiative? You're covered with Common Ground on Common Core, the collection of essays by 20 top education experts and activists. Reviewers call it the best single resource on the topic. You can share it with literally anyone. Order your print or digital copy of Common Ground on Common Core today. Just visit resoundingbooks.org. That's resoundingbooks.org. And get $2 off when you tell them Vito and Vito sent you. Paid for by Resounding Books Pack. It's important to plan ahead for emergencies, like Like the storm. storm. When it kicked in, we had a plan. We were able to get in touch with each other in no time. We had no idea how to find each other. The The whole experience was was the most frightening 10 hours of my life. If there's there's one piece of advice advice I'd offer other moms moms out there, there, it's to stay calm and keep to the plan. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at readypa.org. Brought to you by Ready PA, FEMA, and the Ad Council. And we're back here on the Vito and Vito Show. Check out the website, www.vitoandvito.com. And, of course, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Vito and Vito Show. Vito, Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin primaries this past week, ladies and gentlemen. 
Ted Cruz winning big. Mm-hmm. Big victory for Ted. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ted, and Bernie. Yeah. Hey, good for him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, I, and I can't stand that commie uh, from here to next week, but I got to give it to him. He's doing pretty well. He's giving Hillary a run. Well, except for the superdelegates. Well, his whole strategy is to defeat Hillary, uh, pretty much. Uh, and, and the way he wants to do that is go after her superdelegates at the convention. He wants to make the case that he's earning. He's already, I think he's won maybe seven out of the last eight or five out of the last six contests. He's won a good chunk so far. He's had a pretty good streak, what I'm trying to say. Uh, and Bernie is looking to beat her here in New York, and, and if he does, good for him. Isn't this like her home Which next week, next week, by the way, we'll do a whole in-depth uh, New York primary right before the, the yeah the April 19th thing, so we're going to have fun That's there. That's right. I mean, where's Hillary from? Because I know she was in Chicago. Is she from Illinois? Because I know she moved here and became a New Yorker. That's what quotes. A New Yorker and ran for Senate here. So everyone loves her here because she's a woman. Feminist icon. Yeah, great. Yeah, Hoorah. Think. If you look at the... Let me just tell you how close the Democratic Party has gotten, pretty much. If you look at pledge delegates between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton has, uh, in terms of pledge delegates, not super delegates, 1,280 delegates. Bernie has 1,030. Add the super delegates, and it comes out to Hillary at 1,749, Bernie at 1,061. He's only about roughly 200 delegates, pledge delegates, away from Hillary. So his whole idea is the same idea Barack Obama had back in 2008, and that is run for president, show that you can win pledge delegates, bring it to the convention, and hope that some super delegates switch over and jump on the Bernie train. I don't know if it's going to happen. Well, he's not Obama. He's a, he's a socialist. Yeah. And you guys see, you know, we know we've seen the, the Democratic Party switch, uh, move to the left. But how much has the party, the super delegates, those guys, how much have, to the left have they gone? Because we mm. see these protests and these kids and all these people out in the streets have gone full to the left, the socialists. But what about the super delegates? That's the question. Yeah. That's the big question. Well, his argument right now is that if Bernie Sanders is beating all the Republican candidates by double digits, that he's able to beat them all by double digits. In polls? Yeah, that's that's his argument. Now, again, Bernie isn't really running against the rest of them. When he does, he's going to get cream. But nonetheless, <clears throat> excuse me, nonetheless, Bernie Sanders is making that argument right now that he is technically the guy that could beat Donald, Ted, and John. Good luck to him. I don't know if the DNC is going to, oh, the Democratic superdelegates are going to buy it, but whatever. That's going to be fun to talk about, but I want to hone in and focus on the Republican primary right now because when you look at Donald Trump, it's it's gonna be tough to see just where the Donald if he's gonna reach twelve thirty seven because I don't think he is. I don't think Donald's gonna get twelve thirty seven. His delegate count right now as of April seventh, uh, seven forty three Donald Trump five seventeen Ted Cruz one forty three John Kasich. Uh, Donald Trump, this is my prediction. He's gonna win New York. He's not only gonna win New York, but he's gonna win big here in New York. I think Ted Cruz is going to struggle in the Northeast, but I think we're going to move around to the middle states, like Indiana and stuff. Ted's going to win that. He'll win some of those states. I think the, the, the deal breaker is going to be California. We both said that Cruz is going to win the presidency from the get-go. Yeah. That's our prediction. Bold prediction. Yeah, because right now he's like third place in New York. So don't let that fool you when I say I don't think he'll win New York. I think this is going to be hard, especially the New York values. There's a lot of people aren't going to see what he's trying to talk about. Even though he's only talking about... Liberal politicians in the state of New York, he has a point. But he's not going to, he's not, you know, people don't see it like that. They just see attack on New York. The Daily News running articles saying, F you, Ted. I mean, drop really, dead, Ted. drop know, that Ted. Ted yeah, yeah. Uh, they hate Trump, but this is Trump's homo, his, you know, his cronies. Right, 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 right. It's New York. This is Trump's, this is Trump's land. But so, this is pretty, right. But, but he, this is the thing. You upstate, too. Right, and, and, and again, we'll do a whole in-depth analysis of New York <clears throat> next week here in the Vito and Vito show. So tune in for that, but I, I just want to make it very clear. When we're looking at California, that's going to be the most probably the most important state because that has 170-something delegates. If a candidate's able to get over the threshold and win those delegates, that's that's like Ted, good for him. Donald just needs to edge him out. He's, he's got to win pretty good there, and it's a close race. Recent polls have Donald Trump eight points, five points ahead of Ted Cruz in California. Still a long ways to go. 
They haven't campaigned heavily out in California. So I want to make one thing clear. Donald Trump does not have such a clear shot to the nomination as many people think he does. And if it gets to a broken convention, I don't see the Donald getting picked. He's got to win in the first ballot or else. He can, don't get me wrong, but I don't think he will. And one of my main criticisms of Donald Trump, Vito, tell me if you agree with me or not, is that ultimately Donald Trump is running a campaign that is a media circus. He's not running a real political campaign. Yeah, I look at the people yeah. around him and what he's right. doing. You know, Corey, Lew- Corey Lewandowski mm-hmm. is not a campaign manager. He can pack the stadiums, right? But he could do that. That's exactly because he's the a nomination. businessman, right? He's a businessman. He can pack stadiums, but what else can he do? What are his voter outreach efforts? What is he trying to do? Doors, you know, knocking on doors. We're talking phone calls. What else is this guy willing to do? Trying to do? He can't. He doesn't know what he's doing. The entire campaign team don't know what he's doing. So Donald Trump shot himself in the foot. If he would have ran like Donald Trump is running now and had a strong campaign team that was making phone calls to voters months before the primary did, instructing them how to change party registration and getting people registered to vote, telling people where to go, getting poll information out there, getting information on voters, he would have won the nomination by now. Instead, he's not running a campaign that he should be running, and I think that's going to hurt him the most. Uh, more talk on Trump next week here on the Vito and Vito Show, but we got to cut away to forget about it moments of the week here what? on the Vito and Vito Show. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Paul, forget about it. That's right. Forget about it moments of the week here on the Vito and Vito Show. Break down some of the craziest moments in politics. Vito, what's the first one? Ready for this? <laughs> Hillary Clinton was in New York today, or yesterday, this week campaigning, and there's a video of her that she cannot swipe a Metro card. Yeah. She was a senator of the state, by the way. Yeah, and she lived here. She lived in Chicago and Washington. I'm sure you learned the subway system living in these big cities. But wait, Hillary Clinton probably rides on a freaking unicorn <laughs> everywhere she goes, okay? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, ladies and gentlemen. Hillary Clinton getting the uh, golden treatment. I can't stand her. You ever seen the way she laughs? I can't stand her at all. I, I just can't stand She's just so fake. Her and Bernie going back and forth. Did you hear what she said about Bernie, what Bernie said about her? They both said they're both not qualified to be president. Yeah, because one's a socialist and one's... Listen, Bernie's one's going to jail, yeah. possibly, you know? That's, or... that's what Bernie's campaign should be. Try to get her back in jail. Back in jail. Try to get her in jail. Yeah. She should already be in jail. Well, he won't touch the whole email thing because he wants to be clean and civil, and now they're saying that they're both not qualified. Hillary throwing daggers yeah, at Bernie, yeah. telling him he's not a real Democrat. I mean, it, it, it's just... Bernie's not a Democrat. He's a socialist. He is, and that's, it, Hillary's got a point there. I hate to say it. Hillary does have a point. Bernie's not really a Democrat. He's never really been a Democrat. Well, I shouldn't say that because all you know, Democrats are pretty much communists. But he's an independent from Vermont, Vita, with a heavy Jewish Brooklyn accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a mess all around. I don't know about that. Bellies. No, I don't know. I don't know, Hillary. Bernie, Bernie is a Democrat. I'm sorry, Bernie is it? No, I'm wrong. Bernie you're is a socialist. Bernie is a Democrat. He's a socialist, and you're being pulled to the left with him. Next, in Palm Springs, uh, I think it's called Dinah. This is a big like, resort, this big place in Palm Springs where 20,000 lesbians gathered. <laughs> for There's a massive hangout just without men. Just a big lesbian... Just a big lesbian get-together <laughs> in Palm Springs. This they organized to... <laughs> all these women, all these lesbians, and they all hung out. Are they butchy lesbians? Are, they... Is that, are we allowed to say butchy? Or is that politically correct? Politically incorrect. I don't give a damn, you know? All right. <laughs> I I, uh, I didn't see too many butchy manly men and <laughs> women. Right. What are they doing there? They're just hanging out. They had pool parties. So it was a big lesbian party. Around. Yes, it was amazing. It was a forty thousand okay. lesbian party. Yes, but no men were allowed. So I am going to dress up. Good for you. <laughs> and sneak in. It's probably an all butch it's party. It's like some like it hot. It's like some yeah. Call you Marilyn Monroe or something. <laughs> I like where that's going. I mean, what else do we have here? Uh, what's our uh, last forget about a moment? This one was influenced, obviously, by your favorite psychologist, uh, Sigmund Freud. Ah, what did he say? Yes. Uh, ben Ford, who's 32, met his mother, who you know, he never met until until recently, named Kim West. She's 51. And uh, they, they, uh, they're they going to get married and have a kid. And they said their sex life is, quote, incredible. Okay? Incredible. Good. <laughs> So she she was nervous because she's yeah. like, wait, why am I so sexually attracted to my son? And she looked it up, and there's a thing called genetic sexual attraction, which is uh, a thing. Okay, genetic sexual attraction. This this is what we're dealing with. I mean, 
Fuck yet about it, man. Yeah, yeah, Oedipus, forget forget about it. Oedipus in there Oedipus is you're right. You married, they have kids, and you see these kids. When you, when you, your mother and, and a son have children, they usually end up being Democrats. Right, right, right. That's that's what happens when there's incest. This, this is this, this is, is do what, what you want. With. Yeah, <laughs> but this is what we're dealing with, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god! All right, listen, Vita. What? What? Let's. I'm gonna <laughs> ask you. Okay, I give up with this. I'm gonna <laughs> ask you again next week. Uh, well, who do you think is gonna win New York? Who do you think is gonna win New York? Donald Trump. You think Donald? I say Donald Trump. Oh, uh, wasn't that fun? Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was. You know fun. what? Who do you think is gonna win California? How about that? Uh oh. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. I say Ted. You take my answers. You ask me, then answer. I say Ted Cruz. What do you say? No, I say Ted Cruz. <laughs> you know, you can't ask me and then answer the question first. I can't take you. Unbelievable. I just, I can't, I cannot take you. Uh, listen, Vito and Vito, we're going to talk more about the New York primary next week on the Vito and Vito show. Be sure to tune in. We're going to have a lot more fun. We're even going to try to get a social on, on our show. We'll see how that goes. Vito and Vito signing off here. New York primary coverage next week, Thursday, 8 p.m. right here on the Vito and Vito show. Go to www.vitoandvito.com. Listen live at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Eastern time. Thursday, Vito and Vito, give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the website, www.vito1vito.com. In Brooklyn, it's nothing but the truth.